Want to earn more money? Want to stop being taken advantage of? Want life to stop nickel and diming you? Then you're a ripe candidate to be a self-advocate. That's right. The best defense for your personal and financial life is sometimes you. But how? You listen to Queer Money episode 318 because today we're talking with Darcy of the award-winning website, We Want Guac, and her push for financial self-advocacy. Now let's get on with the show. Welcome back to another episode, folks. Um, so the other day I was scrolling through Twitter and um, As one does. It's, it's not often, <laughs> <laughs> it's not often, but from time to time I click on a link and I follow that link out to something, whether it's an article or another website or something like that. And the other day I was doing this and I, I landed on an article and I started reading this article and I read the article and although the article was not LGBT themed, I saw LG, the LGBT community written all over this article. Um, and so um, because of that, we wanted to invite Darcy, who writes at the blog, We Want Guac, onto the show to talk about this idea of um, financial self-advocacy. Well, and actually, we'll, we'll talk about self-advocacy and what that is in general. Um, but the whole idea of self-advocacy is, advocacy is something that we allude to a lot in the show, but we don't really ever address it head on. We don't ever, ha we haven't had an episode specifically about self-advocacy and how important that is or the role that it plays in your finances. So we wanted to invite Darcy onto the show. So thank you for joining us, Darcy. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. You I'm bet. so glad I'm here with you guys. <laughs> That's going to be fun. It's a, it's a, it was a very interesting article. Like I said, um, the theme of the article, and I don't think you even ever mentioned the LGBT community in the article from, from what I can tell, but you have all of these different angles that you talk from in the article about self-advocacy. Um, and it, it just, it really got me excited to think about how much um, this has an impact on folks within the LGBT community and, uh, and other um historically marginalized communities. Um, and so um, I, I, I think it's really important. Maybe we should start off with, let's just talk about what is self-advocacy. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so quite a few folks know what advocacy is itself, because um, so many of our um, so many of our different advancements, especially when it comes to the queer community, happen because of advocacy. Um, when it comes to self-advocacy, um, that's that generally means that you're not only that you're not only advocating for yourself, um, but but also just focus completely on being a, a one band band essentially about your own well being, whether that be financial or otherwise. Yeah, it, I think that the community, and I think that that um, society in general, especially after what has happened over the last couple of years, has hot, we've heard a lot about self care. But self-advocacy and self-care are a little different, aren't they, right? I mean, taking care of yourself is important for your physical and mental well-being, but advocating for yourself goes a little bit beyond just yourself, right? It kind of does push into the people who are you're interacting with, right? Yeah, that's definitely right. Um, you might like you might see self-advocacy as a as a type of way to um, take your self care to the next level and ensuring that um, that it's not only your own personal health that you're focused on, but also um, with other aspects of your life that you're ensuring that this is um, improving, if not outright fixing um, different challenges that you run into. Yeah, now I can see that this might make some people uncomfortable a little bit because you sort of have to stand up and speak for yourself in a way that I think, especially when we're talking about money, people aren't necessarily inclined to do that, right? So we're all kind of like, oh, I should just be grateful for whatever, you know, whatever salary I can get or the fact that I can just get a job, right? And we're a little bit, I think a little bit more fearful of stepping up and saying, well, uh, I appreciate getting the job, thank you, but you also need to pay me 
uh, commensurate to my skills, the value that I bring, all of that. And so I deserve X, Y, Z salary. And I think a lot of people might be like, ah, I can't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, you know, I think one of the reasons why I kind of thought this was so appropriate for folks in the LGBT community is, is oftentimes we've come from places and, and um, mindsets of I, I don't want people to know about me or I don't feel comfortable sharing much about myself. And so, and maybe we've been bullied and picked on. And so because of that, we have a tendency to maybe just accept things the way they are, or maybe cower a little bit because we're, we're not, we maybe don't, haven't built up the skills of confidence. Right. So Maybe you could share with us an example that's non-financially related as to what, 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 let's talk about what, where's some examples of self-advocacy? Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and like you said, when it comes to self-advocacy, it's, it's not something that comes very naturally or very easy to, um, people who are LGBT or otherwise, um, in, you know, in the, in this society, especially when it comes to things like negotiating or, or really just standing up and saying like, Hey, this isn't right. Um, we should, we should change that. That's not something that's, that's very natural to, uh, to our culture, as much as we might scream about freedom and, you know, like going up against the man, it's very hard to do that in practice, especially if you're, if it's just yourself going for it. Right. Um, when it comes to self-advocacy, um, you can find a lot of really great examples from um, another marginalized community um, in those with disabilities. Um, the term self-advocacy actually originates from the uh, from the disability movement to get to have them collect more rights um, to really really progress in society. Um, so you might see self-advocacy a lot at your local government level. Um, someone with a wheelchair who's exercising self-advocacy might come to a town hall over installing ramps at the local train station or shopping center or music venue. Um, you know, just because there might be laws about accessibility or, um, in our, or you know, in our case about um, discrimination against um, gender identity or sexual orientation, it doesn't mean that every place is going to be embracing that. Um, so self-advocacy in that sense um, will, will really help you, you know, move forward, um, even if everything else says that, oh, yeah, this should already be done, or why, why do you need to make such a big deal about this? Um, it's so important to, and absolutely crucial to your well-being to, um, to ensure that you're, you keep progressing and keep moving forward and keep pushing for, um, for some corrections over a wrong that you see. Right. I, I guess that the, you drive home the point there that um, it's important for progress, right? If people aren't self-advocating, it's highly unlikely that we are going to see any progress um, because more often than not, if people don't know that something is, is damaging or hurting someone else, then they're not going to advocate for them. And then there are those who are pushing in the other direction intentionally trying to discriminate against. So if you, if we don't stand up and say something or do something for ourselves, we can basically go backwards or, or cause more discrimination to occur. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, when it comes to really pushing for self-advocacy too, oftentimes other people that you don't even know are seeing you will see you and, and they'll be inspired going, Hey, they're like me. Um, let me, let me join them. Or, you know, they'll, they'll use that as inspiration to uh, perform their own self-advocacy. So it's not only empowering for yourself, um, but also for the people around you who are looking that you're not even aware of. Right. But you have to admit it's kind of scary. Oh, God, yes. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's, it is kind of scary. I, I, well, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this, you know, from just from my personal perspective, you know, growing up as a kid who was bullied and, and even once I kind of got my foothold in the corporate culture, I don't think I ever looking back at it, I don't think I really ever did a whole lot of advocating for myself. Um, I think I did things for the community um, I worked in, in you know, helping with the local AIDS walks and, and things like that, did stuff for the community, but I don't know if I really thought much about my own particular situations where I could advocate for myself. So maybe 
maybe you could share some examples of where you think we should be advocating for ourselves. Yes, completely. Um, so I'll focus here on, um, on advocating yourself from a financial standpoint, um, just because yeah, this is the Queer Money Podcast. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I'm happy to, uh, to stick with subject matter there. Um, so when, so when there's some kind of, um, you know, you know, issue in your life, um, it's, it's so easy. I, I feel like to be, to be a nurturer and to, um, and to, you know, help out others, um, at the expense of helping out yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's so essential to, uh, to, to realize that self-advocacy, um, you know, not only will help yourself, but you shouldn't feel bad about that because, um, doing that for yourself means that you'll have more of the bandwidth and more energy to tackle these other um, issues for other people. Um, so all of that fully helps out. And for me personally, um, self-advocating when it comes to my finances has uh, done absolute wonders for my mental health and my mental energy. Um, uh, a couple of examples that, um, that I've brought up in the past um, include uh, work-wise, career-wise, um, you know, just negotiating for, for the raises that I know I deserve, or at the very least, a, a market rate. So even if you, even if you have some low self-esteem and you think, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm doing a good enough job for this, or I don't know if I deserve this. Um, it, you're in, it's, it's very interesting how these, uh, how these inner voices will always kind of knock you down, right. um, <laughs> showing you that you're like trying to convince you that you're worth less than you actually are. If you really need a, an objective perspective to look at that, um, I always say, Hey, well, like do some research and see what other people with your similar skills are earning in the workforce. Um, places like Glassdoor or salary.com, um, have some really great insights into showing what your market rate is for your city. Um, and things like that really helped me uh, get the confidence that I wanted to, uh, to advocate for getting that, that higher salary that I wanted. Um, a, a couple of examples um, include at my last job. So prior to my current role, um, I, I had a, a, a title of marketing manager and um, I was making about $65,000 a year in salary. Um, I looked online and I was like, wait a minute, people with my job title are actually making like tens of thousands of dollars more than this. Um, and so, and so that gave me not only the, the, the push to ask my boss for a raise, but also some justification of, Hey, you know, there's a precedent for this. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, other people are, are making this much as a minimum and I'm being underpaid here. Let's, let's talk and see, um, how I can further get a raise from here. And I did end up getting a raise from that, but the raise I got at my current job was even greater. Um, so, <laughs> so in my current role, once I uh, went through the interview process, um, my now boss offered me a salary of $80,000 a year, um, which was very exciting. But I went back and I went, hey, so um, I, I actually want to um, have something that's more in line with, uh, with something in the mid 80s range. And uh, was able to bump that starting salary up to eighty six thousand dollars, which equates to about a seven or eight percent raise wow. just from negotiating and just from embracing self advocacy with that. 